It was initially believed that the hollow earth was nothing but a series of underground pathways and tunnels that allowed the Titans to move around freely. However, it was later revealed that it's something of an entire planet with a super complex ecosystem of its own. So, when there's an ecosystem, there's gotta be innumerable creatures that populate it. And that's what we're here to explore. So, in this video, we will explore all the 21 known creatures who inhabit the Hollow Earth. Let's begin, shall we? But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Godzilla. The Monsterverse Godzilla is a legendary titan that's been around for innumerable years and has been the cause of awe and chaos in equal measure. This isn't the first time Godzilla's stomped around in an American film, but it's definitely one of his most memorable outings. He's a massive predator that munches on radiation for breakfast and has been appearing throughout history, getting worshipped as a deity by ancient folks who probably didn't know better. We already know who and what monarch is, so I won't go into the details. But if you want more information, you can check out our video on the timeline of Monarch. So, they've been on Godzilla's radar since 54, when the US thought it'd be a bright idea to take him out with a hydrogen bomb. Of course, it didn't work. In 2019, some eco-terrorists thought it would be fun to unleash Godzilla's arch-enemy, King Ghidorah, from a block of ice in Antarctica. Once again, terrible decision. Godzilla and Ghidorah fought a couple of times, but Big G had to retreat and lick his wounds mainly because of human meddling. But Dr. Serizawa sacrifices himself to speed up Godzilla's healing with a nuke. Powered up, Godzilla, with a little help from his friend Mothra, eventually kicks Ghidorah's butt in Boston. After that, all the titans that Ghidorah woke up considered Godzilla the boss and crowned him king of the monsters. Godzilla then took a bit of a world tour, keeping the peace between titans and humans until he found a nice spot to chill. But peace was short-lived. He got wind of Apex Cybernetics building Mecha Godzilla, a titan killing machine, and wasn't having any of it. His attacks on Apex facilities got everyone thinking he had gone rogue. Then he clashed with King Kong while the Big Ape was being moved by a naval fleet, nearly taking him out. Their rivalry took them to Hong Kong, where Godzilla used his atomic breath to create a shortcut to the Hollow Earth. The rematch was brutal, but Godzilla had the upper hand. Just as Mechagodzilla joined the fray and overpowered Godzilla, Kong stepped in and together, they trashed the mechanical menace. Post-fight, Godzilla and Kong nodded to each other like, we're cool, and went their separate ways. In Godzilla vs. Kong, Godzilla was more aggressive, especially against human tech and the military, but only when they mess with him first. He still tries to avoid unnecessary fights, like when he let the fleet carrying Kong off the hook, or decided not to finish off Kong in Hong Kong. According to the director, Adam Wingard, Godzilla was just messing with Kong for the most part, showing a bit of a playful side, until things got serious. After the dust settled and Mechagodzilla was history, Godzilla gave Kong and humanity a nod of respect and dipped back into the ocean. Kong and Titanus Kong Superspecies King Kong, the colossal ape titan that first crashed into our world in the 2017 movie Kong Skull Island, is the biggest version of the character we've ever seen. Needless to say, he is more than some giant ape who loves kids and drools over hot women. He's the guardian of Skull Island and is tasked with keeping the natural order in check and protecting the island's denizens from anything that threatens peace. He's not against killing to feed, but if one species becomes too dominant so as to threaten the very survival of others, Kong springs into action. Just ask the skull crawlers. So basically, Kong has this protector persona, a title he shares with other titans like Godzilla and Mothra, which is in contrast to others like King Ghidorah and Muto 
who are called destroyers. Despite his territorial nature, Kong's got a soft side, especially evident when he saves a scare buffalo and doesn't hesitate to rescue humans like Mason Weaver when they're in a pinch. Generally, Kong is rather cool around humans and only gets aggressive if you push his buttons much like Godzilla, but Kong is definitely more tolerant. The Iwi tribe, native to Skull Island, totally reveres Kong. They see him as a hero and credit him and his family for saving them from the nasty skull crawlers back in the day. Kong's curiosity isn't just limited to his interactions with humans. He's also fascinated by his own history, which is why he explored the ancient temples and relics of his species in the Hollow Earth. Born in the heat of battle, Kong's early life was tragic, with his parents killed by skull crawlers just after his birth. This loss fueled Kong's determination to protect the island and its inhabitants. His existence remained a secret to the outside world until World War II, when two fighter pilots crash-landed on the island. In 1973, a monarch-led expedition exposed Kong to humans and trouble. Kong's backstory is deeply tied to the Hollow Earth, believed to be the cradle of Titan evolution. His species once coexisted with humans there, which is why there were ancient carvings and a grand temple complete with a throne room. The second trailer shows that Kong's extended family might still be hanging around in Hollow Earth. According to legend, Kong's ancestors even clashed with Godzilla's kind. However, a rivalry with Godzilla forced Kong's ancestors to flee to Skull Island. By the time Kong was born, only his parents remained to fight this war, a battle they ultimately lost leaving Kong as the last of his kind and the island's fierce protector. Monarch theorizes that Kong's species might just be the original blueprint for human life, considering their size and intelligence. Scar King. So, the buzz is real for the next big clash in Monster vs. Titan World with Godzilla x Kong The New Empire set to release on March 29th. After Godzilla Minus One totally rocked the boat last year, fans are all hyped up for more kaiju action. And of course, there's a new supermassive mega bad boy in town, the Scar King. Recently, the second trailer and some fresh pics dropped on the official X account have been the talk of the town, at least as far as Godzilla fans are concerned. The Scar King is a beast that kind of mirrors Kong, but Scar King is more orangutan than a gorilla. He is long, muscular, and also a bit of a hunchback. Plus, a scar over his right eye adds to his rugged charm, and it's what gives him his name. His skin's pale, but he has this thick reddish fur everywhere except his face, chest, and limbs. His eyes have a soft blue glow, not to mention the faded red war paint, and all of this only pronounces his eeriness and the terror he exudes. One of the recent pictures shows the Scar King sitting on his throne like he owns the place, which he kind of does. Another one zooms in on his eyes with a spark of lightning, and a third shows his immense height, making humans look like ants. Godzilla x Kong The New Empire director Adam Wingard is steering the ship, bringing back familiar faces like Rebecca Hall and Brian Tyree Henry, and introducing new blood like Dan Stevens. Shimo. Shimo is a cool new titan, literally, who is set up to appear in Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. This legendary ice titan is stepping up as one of the coolest bad guys who is ready to fight with Godzilla and Kong. If you're into collectibles, you might have caught a sneak peek on the Playmates figure packaging. Shimo has a reptilian appearance, kind of reminiscent of Godzilla, but with her own icy nature. She's on all fours, has pristine white scales that exude major winter wonderland feels. Her back has these awesome blue crystalline spines trailing all the way down her tail, which ends in some Stegosaurus-style thagomizers. And she has a crown of crystals jutting out from her head. Despite her imposing presence, she also has a surprisingly sleek frame, especially around her abdomen and legs. Her eyes are blue with black pupils, but they get lost in a bright blue glow when she's all powered up. Merch has teased us with glimpses of her standing tall, which hints at a versatile posture beyond her usual bear-like stance. Power and abilities-wise, Shimo brings the chill with her frostbite blast or breath, depending on which toy you're checking out, capable of freezing her foes solid 
or causing full-blown ice storms with a shot into the sky. In the trailers, she's seen icing over Kong's axe and whipping up massive ice chunks on impact. When she unleashes her icy fury, everything lights up in a brilliant blue, from her eyes to her spiky tail decorations. Tiamat So Tiamat is the serpentine titan who's been lurking around since the MonsterVerse caught wind of her in 2019. First name drop was on a monarch map in Godzilla King of the Monsters, but she really and literally made waves in the Godzilla Dominion graphic novel in 2021. This titan used to chill under Stone Mountain, Georgia, until King Ghidorah's shout-out in 2019 had her waking up on the wrong side of the bed. And of course, she went all out on humanity. She cooled off when Madison Russell played the orca in Boston. Austin. Tiamat has been living in Hollow Earth and didn't really like it when Godzilla came to say hello. She had the upper hand initially and managed to take Godzilla for a wild underwater ride. She constricted him before attacking him with her acidic breath. But Godzilla isn't Godzilla for nothing. He somehow brought the party on land and made Tiamat eat dirt and eventually back off after a show of dominance. In Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong, Tiamat went to Atlantis, which gave Aquaman and Queen Mura a serious head. He tried to speak to her using his mojo, but that went down the drain. In the end, Godzilla steps in and Aquaman unleashes the Kraken, which made it a triple threat match. Green Lantern Hal Jordan tried to trap Tiamat in a net of green light, but she's a tough cookie. It doesn't take time for her to bust out of the trap and attack the Dome of Atlantis. It took Flash's quick thinking and a little more Green Lantern muscle to patch things up and redirect Tiamat's tour of destruction. Shimada Shimada was a creature that was designed for the 2021 MonsterVerse film Godzilla vs. Kong, but didn't make the final cut. The creature defied the typical inspiration drawn from natural life forms. It doesn't really mirror a singular creature. Shimada was a fascinating blend of a reptilian naked mole rat and an insect larva. The monster has six small insect-like legs paired with two larger, more dominant arms, reminiscent of an insect's forelimbs. Interestingly, the titan's body is topped with scutes along the back, while the lower half boasts overlapping armor plates. The skin is saggy, and the jowls are unmistakably floppy. Shimada's eyes are tiny, which kind of tells us that vision isn't its primary sense. But the craziest thing about it is its mouth, a flower-like wonder that doubles as a clever trap for the unwary, blending seamlessly into the terrain until it's too late. Now, this reminds me heavily of the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. This creature is not really a passive predator. It's actually pretty strategic. Shimada can burrow, lying in wait for its prey. With most of its body hidden underground, it opens its petal-like mouth wide to become one with the earth. It uses its forelimbs to kind of anchor itself firmly in place, but also to grab hold of larger prey that dares to venture too close. However, Shimada isn't without its vulnerabilities. Its life, mostly spent underground, means it's at a disadvantage on the surface. This creature, conceptualized with elements similar to Godzilla himself, including the gills and neck, is proof of the potential for a terrifying yet fascinating addition to the Hollow Earth ecosystem. Ion Dragons The Ion Dragon is one of my absolutely favorite monsters and first appeared in Monarch Legacy of Monsters. While its formal name wasn't revealed, Bill Randa and Lee Shaw opted for the term dragon in early sightings and it was called the Lawton Dragon in later references. However, the name Ion Dragon was given by series co-creators Chris Black and Sean Conrad during a Newsweek interview. Conceptualized with a specific vision, the Ion Dragon was designed to embody the essence of a dragon while bringing unique attributes to the table. It had to exude an otherworldly aura with its knacker emission and possess a size huge enough to sink and transport a destroyer. Initial concepts took a bird-like approach and drew inspiration from Philippine wildlife. But the final design also borrowed elements from deep sea creatures to create a creature that seemed out of place in both the jungle and the ocean. In fact, the Ion Dragon also borrows from certain traditional dragon aesthetics. You could see hints of a gargoyle with a dash of deep sea monsters. So it has anglerfish-like features on a gargoyle-like body, wings that look similar to flying fish, 
And lastly, the magnificent creature is also influenced by raptors to sharks. Weta Workshop brought the Ion Dragon to life, fine-tuning its CGI model to ensure its movements were as believable as they were terrifying. Additionally, the dragon sports a wide, fish-like head with reptilian eyes, sharp teeth, and a body covered in glossy black scales. Its neck has a series of gills, and its two dark red wings end in four-fingered hands. The creature's hind limbs are notably shorter, and its tail has needle-like spines that end in a pincer-like claw. Notably, one of its horns is chipped, presumably the result of a previously fought battle. The Ion Dragon's story has been around for decades. It sunk a destroyer in 1943 and hunted the crew of the USS Lawton in 1952 and later engaged in a confrontation with Godzilla. Endopede. The Endopedes are a species of insectoid titans that first appeared in Monarch Legacy of Monsters. First introduced in the Aftermath episode, these creatures begin their life cycle as endoswarmers, which were larval forms found beneath a Kazakh abandoned power plant in 1959 by Lee Shaw, William Randa, and Keiko Randa. During an attempt to collect genetic material, the team inadvertently awakens the hungry larva, which leads to the swarm attacking Keiko. The survivors among these larvae eventually transform into the adult endopedes. By 2015, an adult endopede made an appearance when it came out of a hollow earth portal at the same power plant and attacked Lee Shaw's team. The scuffle ended with the creature retreating into the portal, which inadvertently dragged Lee, Kate Randa, and May Olo Hewitt into hollow earth. The endoswarmers, as shared by executive producer Frank Matt Fraction, diversify the Titan land. Landscape. It basically means that not all titans have great heights. They have elongated bodies covered in jagged black chitinous armor and hatch from glowing orange eggs. Comparable in length, but slightly shorter than an adult human, these larvae morph into endopedes and retain their chitinous exterior. As they grow, they enlarge in size and develop features such as four large horn-like mandibles and circular rows of sharp teeth complemented by lengthy tendrils. Endopedes communicate through sounds. The larva emits chitters and squeaks, while the adults roar in a manner similar to the mutos. Predatory by nature, endopedes feed on radiation and prey, with females laying eggs in radiation-rich nurseries to support their offspring's development. Frostfarks. The Frostfark is a beast that definitely made a mark in the memories of whoever watched the Monarch TV show. The fascinating beast made its first appearance in Alaska in 2015, where Lee Shaw and his team suffered some serious casualties because of Frostfark. They were on a hunt for Hiroshi Randa when this ice-cold creature attacked them. Duho, the team's ace pilot, thought he'd take a crack at it with his plane. Big mistake. The Frostfark slashed through the plane like it was paper, leaving Duho frozen solid with its ability to suck up all the warmth around. After wrecking the plane, it turned to Lee, Kate, Kentaro, and May. Kentaro briefly distracted it with a flare gun, but it barely phased the creature. A few days later, the frost fart gets lured to an Alaskan hollow earth vortex by Lee Shaw and Michelle Duval's Monarch Squad. As they set explosives to destroy the vortex, the Frostvark leapt at their chopper, only to get sucked into the closing vortex itself. Appearance-wise, this creature is a walking ice fortress. It's got a quadrupedal stance, covered head to tail in these angular armor plates that stick out all over. Between these plates, it's all fur. One of the Frostvark's most distinctive features is the series of sensory tendrils that protrude from its snout. These tendrils are tipped with bioluminescent globules that emit a vibrant blue light, possibly serving as a mechanism for sensing its environment or attracting prey. Its mouth is filled with jagged fangs, which could only mean that it is a carnivorous animal. In terms of behavior, the Frostvark is a highly aggressive creature and attacks anything that disturbs its territory or is a source of heat. Bramble Boars. The Bramble Boar is a creature that's part flora and part fauna, which is not unusual for hollow earth creatures and other titans. It's got antlers and plant-like growths across its body. You could say that it's basically an oversized wild pig, 
but no mere mortal pigs come with botanical protrusions along their backs and skulls. And of course, they do not dwarf humans in size. But our bramble boar friends do all of this. Its mouth has peg-like teeth and two sets of sharp tusks one on the lower jaw and another piercing through the upper snout. The bramble boar's vocalizations are deeper than the typical pig's, and additionally, the bramble boar's growls, grunts, and squeals carry a more guttural tone. The giant boar has a complex personality. It's highly territorial and inquisitively approaches unfamiliar beings because it sees them as prey, but only when such beings have been deemed non-threatening. However, despite its aggressive demeanor, the bramble boar can easily be scared off by perceived threats, especially to vulnerable areas like the eyes. Its thick hide provides resilience against arrows, though such attacks can still make it run with its tail between its legs. The Rival The Rival was an unnamed beast from the Titanus Kong family, and was also named the rival in the screenplay. Of course, it was a massive ape-like titan, but that's pretty obvious. Anyway, the kaiju is famous for battling Godzilla, defeating him, and taking over one of his Hollow Earth hideouts. This victory established the rival's dominance over that territory. However, as time passed and the rival aged, he met his end in a confrontation with Tiamat who sought to claim the lair for herself. When Godzilla later stumbled upon his remains, all that was left to tell the tale was the rival's twisted skull. Skull Crawlers Skull Crawlers are amphibian predators that have a very alien physique. To be honest, I did get the chills when I first saw them. They've got two long forelimbs and no back legs topped off with sinuous, serpent-like tails. Their bodies are lean and muscular, with a skeletal outlook, especially around their torsos and skull-like heads. The deceptive eye sockets on their heads are actually empty spaces, not for eyes, but possibly to mislead foes or sense heat, since their real eyes are further back, hidden away. In fact, their eyes are horizontal and frog-like green eyes, while their skin tones vary from dark hues to bone white. And under certain light, you can spot their rib cages through their semi-transparent skin. Their heads mirror the mosasaurs. You can see a double row of sharp serrated teeth, and they have hands with four clawed fingers, including a notably smaller thumb. Adult skull crawlers have distinctive bony spikes on their elbows, and their mouths contain thorny structures similar to those of a leatherback turtle, along with a unique triple-forked tongue perfect for snatching up prey. Now, the interesting thing about these guys is that although they are apex predators, they mostly live underground and hunt in packs. Skull crawlers have an endless hunger driven by their fast metabolism, which leads to some pretty brutal sex drives where some of them get devoured. Needless to say, their aggression and persistence in hunting are unmatched, yet they display surprising intelligence and caution, as seen when a large one cleverly avoided a grenade trap. Psycho Vultures Leaf Wings, aka the Psycho Vultures, are immense bat-like creatures with expansive wingspans and leathery wings. They have short, broad skulls and mouths filled with sizable, uneven teeth. But you know what? I don't really think that they should be called Titans. I mean, yeah, they are from Hollow Earth and all that, but come on, they don't really give off the Titan vibes, you know what I mean? Anyway, their limbs end in three taloned digits, and they are distinguished by dense, dark manes. The males have a mohawk, while females display a cobra hood-like feature. Hmm, easily distinguishable. The pack is often led by an alpha, who is usually a male significantly large enough to match the size of Kong's head. Psycho vultures are known to actively seek out psychoactive substances, such as toxins from pufferfish found on their island. Okay, so that kind of explains their state of heightened aggression and recklessness. I mean, these guys attack just about anything and go completely nuts while doing it. In fact, they don't even spare their own kind, let alone their cousins, leaf wings. Leaf wings. Leaf wings, in comparison, are pterosaur-like beings somewhat smaller than an adult human. They have a green body, yellow head, and orange wings, which are kind of complemented by their elongated, spear-shaped snouts edged with sharp projections. But yeah, not really pretty to look at. The variants found in the hollow earth share a physical resemblance to those from Skull Island, 
albeit with a red and green color scheme. Leaf wings, although less hostile than psycho vultures, can pose some serious trouble because they usually attack in groups and use their numbers to overpower other gargantuan enemies. They show some degree of cooperative hunting tactics and are perfectly capable of lifting and dismantling sizable prey together. <laughs> Warbats. Warbats, like other titans, come from the depths of the hollow earth. Of course, this means that their massive size is a result of the unique energy that fills this underground world. From a macro view, you'll find that these creatures are essentially serpentine reptiles with a grayish hue with two beautiful red wings. They also have long spines along their upper body, which kind of looks like an extended version of the rib cage. Their snake-like torso is primarily designed for travel through the depths of the hollow earth and its super rugged landscape. If you've watched Godzilla vs. Kong, you would know that their heads are large and snake-like. Since the head is like a snake head, it's gotta have fangs, and these bad boys are equipped with two 14-foot fangs in the lower jaw. Yep, you heard that right. Additionally, these fangs are complemented by a mouthful of sharp, needle-like teeth. Warbats have green eyes with horizontal, cat-like pupils and a bony ridge over the eyes, similar to a crocodile, and their blood is a light green color. So, how do they communicate? Warbats possess a deep, raspy roar, with some vocalizations borrowed from other cinematic creatures like Insectosaurus from Monsters vs. Aliens. In fact, they even resemble the Nazgul from The Lord of the Rings and the Xenomorphs from the Alien series. Behaviorally, warbats are dominant predators in the Hollow Earth's rainforests and use their lengthy bodies to constrict prey. Now, this behavior is quite similar to the tactics of modern-day constrictor snakes. However, unlike the bigger snakes like the pythons and anacondas, the warbats are venomous and can eject near nearly 10,000 gallons of venom during one bite. They are aggressive and are known for their ability to hunt in pairs, as seen when two warbats coordinated their attack on Kong. Rock Critters During the production of Godzilla vs. Kong, the creatures were informally referred to as Rock Critters by the team, a name that also appeared in the film's art book and an exhibit at Godzilla Interception Operation Awaji. They've been identified under several names in various contexts, including arachnoclaws in the HBO Max audio description, lava crabs by VFX supervisor John Desjardins, lava creatures by artist Xander Smith, rock crabs in PUBG Mobile, and crab creatures in the film's novelization. However, the Japanese theater program for the film lists them as an unidentified organism, specifically rock creature, with Monarch's official designation for them remaining unspecified. The design concept for the rock critters was developed by Ken Barthelemy, who was tasked with creating a creature that could camouflage with the hollow Earth's rocky terrain. Early in the design process, there was consideration for the creatures to have a crystalline composition. Barthelemy was inspired by crabs for their design and incorporated retractable claws and experimented with different head and mouth structures. Adam Wingard, the director, showed a preference for a mouth design segmented into four parts, something like a beak. Xander Smith brought the final design to life in 3D using ZBrush. <laughs> Doug. Doug, or the Hollow Earth Lizard, is pretty fascinating if you're a dinosaur fan. Their origins are a bit of a puzzle, but they've likely been thriving down there, beefed up by that unique Hollow Earth energy. Some folks even think they're distant cousins of Godzilla, what with their jagged dorsal plates and all. These big reptiles sport a slick, grayish-black skin, like they're wearing armor made of spikes and osteoderms, handy for warding off other Hollow Earth tough guys. They've got chunky heads with jaws packed full of gnarly teeth, and eyes that stare straight ahead, predator style. Dugs are quite the sneaky types, masters of the ambush. They blend right in with the rocky landscape, waiting to pounce on any poor creature that stumbles into their turf. When Kong kicked up a fuss with some mantle claws, these lizards were right there, ready to capitalize on the chaos. They can often be seen hanging out in groups. Maybe they're chit-chatting about lizard stuff or teaming up for a big hunt. Either way, they're not your average solitary predators. <laughs> Ah! 
Hellhawks. Hellhawks are another fascinating species originating from hollow earth. Now, these creatures have avian and bat-like features. For instance, they've got these vulture-like heads with sharp beaks and bird-like claws. Their bat-inspired wings have a leathery texture, which again is, well, bat-like. They're supported by four finger-like phalanges and a distinct thumb. However, they lack the full plumage typical of birds. Instead of that, the warbats have got sparse, hair-like feathers on their heads and back, where jagged spines also protrude. On the ground, they assume what looks like a bird-like stance, with wings folded neatly at their sides, and they can also use their wings as forelimbs for crawling, similar to bats. Their vocalizations include shrill, piercing screeches during attacks and guttural parrot-like sounds in social interactions. Like most creatures from Hollow Earth, the Hellhawks are predatory and highly territorial. What's their territory? Well, the Hollow Earth's caverns. Again, like the other Hollow Earth denizens, these guys are also quite aggressive towards intruders and compete fiercely over food, which only goes on to say that there's a degree of challenge as far as sustenance is concerned. They evolved to thrive in the Hollow Earth's dark caves, where they reside upside down, much like bats. By 2024, a significant number had taken residence in the derelict Kong Temple. Genitor and its swarm. Dr. Ishiro Serizawa's use of a nuclear device to resurrect Godzilla inadvertently created a portal to the Hollow Earth, which ultimately unleashed a swarm of ancient aquatic creatures. These creatures swarmed Godzilla, who retaliated with his atomic breath and incinerated many of these beasts. Despite this, the creatures persisted and were led by their janitor, who was their leader or somewhat of a queen. Godzilla killed this leader by extracting its spine, which led the swarm to cannibalize the fallen leader before Godzilla obliterated them into nothingness. These fish monsters have a distinct blue hue, beak-like bony plates instead of teeth, and ghostly white eyes, presenting a stark deviation from typical marine life. The genitor's appearance pretty much resembles the Dunkleosteus, with a rugged blue body, red undersided pectoral fins featuring three digits, and distinctive red ribbon-like flesh on its dorsal, pelvic, and tail fins. Its mouth has two pairs of sharp bony plates. Initially unnamed in Greg Keyes' script, the creatures were called murderfish by illustrator Drew Jackson. Camazots. The Iwi tribe on Skull Island knew about this guy, leaving behind ancient hieroglyphics near the island's hollow earth entrance that hinted at Camazots' eventual rise, which they believed would cloak the island in a never-ending storm. There's even an old Guarani prophecy calling him the Eternal Bat a harbinger of doom for stars and mankind. Kamazots has a massive gray bat-like body with devilish horns and a face that's the stuff of horror films. His huge ragged wings are all spiky, doubling his forelimbs when he's not flying. He's armored up with angular plates covering his body. One of his horns looks like it's seen better days, probably a souvenir from an old scrap. He also has a black fur mane that runs down his back and neck. Inside his mouth, you'll find a bunch of jagged dagger-like teeth, perfect for a creature of his caliber. His tail is long and spiky, and he can grab stuff with it. Camazots' minions. Camazots' minions are smaller versions of their alpha and are equipped with huge leathery wings and sharp talons and are covered in sections by dark fur along their necks and backs. These creatures have angular plate-like armor and long spiked tails with their horns being noticeably less prominent than those of Camazots. Their wings lack the alpha's spines and their eye sockets appear as dark empty voids. However, they are as a aggressive as Camazots are and are loyal to the Titan. In fact, they serve him as his personal army. They maintain a symbiotic relationship with Camazots and depend on the chaos he creates for sustenance. However, their organized behavior collapses without their Alpha's leadership. So that was all for this video. We're exploring several aspects about the new MonsterVerse movie. So if you're a fan, I suggest that you stick around. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.